My name's David Crystal, and I'm the, no, I don't know what to say, author of a DVD about language. Certainly author of the accompanying book that goes with a DVD, but what is one with a DVD? Is one an author, a presenter, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure. The reason why there is this rather curious combination of DVD and book is because I spend quite a lot of my time travelling, giving lectures uh, wherever I can. I'm invited to many places around the world, and you just can't get to all of them. And therefore you have to decide how you handle all these invitations you can't respond to. One of the big situations you find yourself in is you give a lecture and afterwards somebody says, oh, my friend couldn't come, or these people couldn't be here today, could you do it again? No, we're going somewhere else. So they say, well, is there a, is there a video of your lectures? Is there a DVD of your lectures? And of course, I've always had to say, no, no, sorry, there isn't. But now I can say, yes, there is. Yes, a DVD is a very clever way of allowing you to be, to have the gift of bilocation, or multi-location, if you like. I can say yes now. And so the question is, what sort of lectures do you put on the DVD? And what I've done for this particular one is I've chosen the three most popular lectures, the three lectures I get asked about most often around the world. They all relate to the revolutionary decade of the 1990s. The 1990s was an amazing decade. Three things happened there. First of all, English became a global language. Everybody realized that for the first time. An amazing event, really, in the history of language. And so the first lecture is called The Future of Englishes, explaining how that happened. The second thing that happened in the 1990s was we discovered that half the languages of the world are dying. So many languages are endangered, almost dying out, and in the next hundred years, many of them will. So the second lecture is all about that. It's about language death and the need to maintain language diversity. And the third thing that happened in the 1990s was the arrival of the Internet. For most people, they started emailing and looking at the web and all of these things during that decade. What are the implications of that for language? The Internet is changing language, allowing us to use it in ways we were never able to do before. And so the third lecture is on Internet linguistics, on the way Internet is affecting our use of language. Now, when you do a series of lectures like this, you, you need an audience. You need to be able to respond to the, the audience and, and react to their reactions to you. And so what we did was we filmed them all in one day at the Shaw Theatre in, in London with a mixed audience of people from various language interest backgrounds. And I did what I call performance lectures. It's a genre that I think you might well have seen very often, where somebody gives a spontaneous performance, structured, highly structured and planned, but nonetheless with, without notes and without reading it and so on. A bit like I'm doing now, really, except lasting an hour instead of just a couple of minutes. And once they'd been done, we realized that they needed a book to accompany them. Because if you're giving a lecture, after it, you look back at it and you say, hmm, I skipped over that point rather rapidly. I wish I'd had a bit more time to do that. I'd rather have said it slightly differently here or there. So the idea was, let's have an accompanying commentary on the lectures, where you can amplify some of the points that were passed over rather briefly. Or where you can look at the idioms and the colloquialisms that you use in the lecture, bearing in mind that many of you out there are going to be from a second language background. Your first language is not English. And so you might be interested in saying, well, what did exactly did he mean by the way he put that particular phrase? And so in the accompanying book, one, I, I explain a great deal of the, the linguistic content of the lectures as well as some of the further implications of the themes that are in there. And we've added subtitles too. Because, after all, uh, there are people who are not used to listening to English in, uh, at such length, and they will find, I think, the subtitles to be particularly helpful. And there are also suggestions, follow-ups for teachers in the classroom, how you might use lectures of this kind in that way. But, you know, I have no idea how people are going to use lectures of this kind. The task has never been done before. I've never seen anybody put their lectures onto a DVD and write an accompanying book. I do not know how you out there are going to use these things in your classrooms or in your homes or wherever. I hope when you decide to use these, you will tell me and I'll learn a great deal from the experience. I don't even know what to call the thing I've just done. A sort of commentary on lectures. What do you call such a thing? I call it a lectumentary.